Alright, so by the way, you've got common ECV here, supplying, and then you've got your various isolated guys. Now, not all SSOVs or um, cookers are going to have a test point, are they? No. Alright, so with this, alright, turn the gas tap on, and hopefully, you can hear it anyway. Come on. See, I told you it won't work. You touched this. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so approximately 45 degrees. That should cut out any more sub so CID. Yeah. Right. However, we drop that. There is no guarantee that gas valve is actually shut. Okay. So we've got two ways of doing it. All right. We can do a mini tank. This test on there. All right. The downside of doing it on there is you've got all of this installation. What's to say there's no leaks or anything? Alright, so another way you could do it, alright, is actually on the outlet. So you are looking for a rise on there. Alright, so making sure you've got everything on, your gauge on, drop the lid, that should go to zero. If you have got any rise, okay, then it is actually passing. Okay. Right. <clears throat> Two controls here in one. However, they are separate in the entirety. The first one you've got, all right. Is your liquid expansion FSD. Remember I kept on saying yesterday, there is more than one FSD, okay. We know it's in FSD because it is in the flame. If it is not in the flame, it is not an FSD. Like some people get confused with. Right now, the way you can tell the difference between this and a the thermocouple, right, like that one, which is a thermoelectric right, valve, like this, this is a liquid expansion valve. Right, that is actually sat across the flame. So because it's sat across the flame, it's got Bit of liquid in it. it could be mercury depending on what actually manufacturers have done now in its cold position this valve here okay which has been fed from here more about this one in a bit okay is in its closed position however if I turn that on get this to bloody light come on okay you will notice it's actually lit but on a really small flame because in here there will be a very very tiny little bypass hole okay now what's happening is this is getting cooked so it's going to start pushing the liquid against a set of bellows inside here so what will happen bellows in there there you go all right it's pushed against them and it's actually opened the valve and let gas through and what it's done is actually put the flame on maximum so to test this all right, all you're gonna do is leave it on for about 60 seconds and that. Turn it off for 60 seconds. So that should now be cooling and the bellows should start going the other way and the valve should shut. So after 60 seconds, I should like this and it should come to what? Small flame. Small flame. All right, if it doesn't, that's ID. That's probably about 60 seconds what we've done it. Make sure you leave the good 60 seconds when you're doing it. All right, so again, there we go, little flame, big flame. So we know that is opening and closing. All right. Now, we need to regulate this. Do you know where we normally find this, by the way? Uh, bottom of the cooker. In the oven? Oven, yeah. Okay. So, we've got... Again, another liquid expansion sort of yes. file, but it's not within the flame, so it's not an FSD. Yeah, you're right, it's a thermostat, but we just move it. Oh, that's clever. Somebody uh, fucking got bust it. Oh, fucking hell, they didn't tell me that would bust. Right, so anyway, that liquid should come here, all right, and in its cold position, that will be open, okay? So now we've lit this and we've got big flame. All right, you're pushing liquid against it. I wonder if it's actually pushing any out. All right, it's probably already pushed it all out. So what it'll be doing is, let's say, 
it's in its open position when it's closed, liquid is going to start pushing against your bellows. Now depending how I adjust that is depending on the distance of the actual seating. It's going to start pushing, pushing, pushing and eventually close it. Right. However, you'll still get a small flame because what have you got in here? Bypass. You better bypass, all right? And then you'll see it'll start cooling down, bellows open, again, it'll let all the gas flow through. To test this, all right, I'm gonna leave it on for a good five minutes. All right, and then what you would do is you'd actually turn it down. Okay, you notice that's gone fully out. Should that have done that, I've not, I've already turned that, have I? Now I've turned it back up. I'll just do that again. So that's on maximum. So what's happened there? I've not, that should be on the low flame, just yeah, it? Because I've still got a bit left. Still got a little bit left. Mm -hmm. And if I turn back, yeah. anyone hear that? Yeah. Never ever shuts off the gas fully, this safety device. It's already cut down there enough. Okay, however, that was happening in the oven. I've got a ticking time bomb on me, mm -hmm. don't I? Customer turns it down. Don't realise gas is filling up now and everything. And then she tries and she filling up. Tries to ignite it, fucking boom. So what's happening there? So why did you do that? Alright, so remember what I said, when that closes, it should still have a small flame, it's still allow a little bit of gas to because we have a bypass in there. However, the fact we've turned that down and it's gone out altogether will suggest our bypass is actually blocked. blocked. Right, so <coughs> can actually clean it if it's got one on, okay? Sometimes there's no bypass at all, so it's a full replacement, right? But as you notice, as soon as we start turning that down, that goes out. Yeah. Okay, so what's happening there is I've turned it right down. It's closed the bellows, but it should still allow a little bit of gas through, but it's not. So it could be because that snaps and the liquid's leaked into No, actually, it, it is a block bypass in there, but, okay. It is actually stuck in there, so it's not going to regulate it. So as I say, as soon as I turn that little bit, it's on. It's on locally. It's cooled down. So if I have to do that, there you go. Right, excellent, guys. Yep. Hopefully, we've got one of them on order. Right then. So that is liquid expansion. Mechanical thermostat, that's the full title. You could just get away with saying mechanical thermostat. The reason why it's mechanical is you've got a valve in there, haven't you? Opening and closing, opening and closing. Ooh, hang on a minute, watch it there. Okay, <laughs> zip blob. Okay, so that, and that is liquid. Now this has got liquid attached to it again. Nice little bullet. Okay, however, if you have a look where it goes into, we have a few electrical connections. All right, so it's a good bet straight away would say this is an electrical thermostat. Full title if you really want to do it, liquid expansion electrical thermostat. We've still got the control here, and if you listen, you can hear the click. Okay. What will your thermostat normally be connected to as well in the in the grand scheme of things? On, on, on this here, this, this section here. Multifunction regular? Uh, yeah, yeah, you're almost there, yeah, multifunction. Right, it'd actually be connected to the solenoid, so the idea being is gas is so far in, all right, and then to regulate it, we open and close our solenoid, don't we, which we'll talk about all the ones individually over there. Now, if you listen to that, right, that clicking is actually just a little mica switch in there. Mica switch, it's a switch, it's either on or off. However, we still have bellows in there because we've got